evening. Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Now today's episode we've got some serious business to talk about um, and about the Kinnahans and the boxing world and then we're going to end with a um, on a lighter note okay and we try and make it a bit jokey and a bit funny okay but we're going to start with um, which one should we start with yeah Right, we start with a uh, headline. Wild West Showtime boss says Daniel Kinahan was wrongly viewed as edgy and mysterious by Boxing World. Stephen Espinosa said the fact that Kinahan had been sanctioned by the US government is not a good thing for the sport, that's for sure. Well, that's got to be the understatement of the year. Right, and you see they're all now trying to run, scramble, the rats are leaving the ship, they're all terrified, right, what's coming down the pipe. It's like they're in the middle of the road and they can see this massive juggernaut coming towards them, right, and they're caught in the headlights like a rabbit, and they don't know what to do, whether to jump off to the side, or don't, they really don't know what to do, they've all froze. Anyway, right, Showtime Sports President Steve Espinosa has sailed has said cartel chief Daniel Kinahan was accepted by the boxing world because some people viewed him as edgy and mysterious. The US broadcasting boss said that some people in boxing loved the allure provided by Daniel Kinahan's criminal activities. Mr Espinosa has been the head of Showtime Sports since 2011 and has been responsible for making boxing a focus for the network. Speaking to FightHype.com, Mr Espinosa said the fact that Kinahan has been sanctioned by the US government is not a good thing for the sport, that's for sure. He said, having people like that within the sport is not a positive, but people view it as something that's sort of edgy and mysterious, and it's Vegas, and there's, there's this allure to it. Well, it might have been Vegas in the 30s and the 40s, 50s, 60s, maybe 70s and 80s, but as we saw from the film Casino, they demolished all the old casinos, threw out all the gangsters, and rebuilt the casinos with junk bonds, Michael Milken, back in the 80s, right, and corporations took over. And now you can't go to Las Vegas and put a million dollars on the counter and say, I want to gamble, you got to give them a social security number and you've got to prove where you got the money from. So boxing needs to have um, root and branch change and a clean out like Vegas did with the casinos. And that means a lot of people are going to be flushed down the Johnny Flusher. A lot of these so-called promoters, a lot of these boxers, a lot of these lawyers, all the people, right? You know, when this blows... Okay, this will be the biggest scandal in the history of boxing. And hopefully a brighter new day will come where maybe corporations will take over and all these so-called middlemen, advisors and all that won't exist anymore. Well, anyway, right, let's get back to the article. It's not corporate. It's a bit of the Wild West and people love that aspect of it. Well, yes, what I've just said. It needs to turn corporate for all the ills of corporations and all the things that people can then complain about them. Well, we've seen what the alternative is with the Daniel Kinahan saga. But there's a difference between no holds barred and the wild, wild west. And then having people that are legitimate global criminals being directly involved in it, he continued. So keeping people like that out of the sport will ultimately be a long-term benefit for the sport. I think there's still a lot to be learned and I think there's more that will come out with a move like this. I don't think it's the end of the story, Espinosa continued. It wouldn't surprise me if there are additional actions by the Treasury Department or the US government to go, for, uh, to go forward because they've obviously been looking at this very, very closely, so it's a potential problem. Mr Espinosa said it will be a problem if Daniel Kinahan has played a role in arranging champion Terence Crawford's upcoming fight. 
His comments come as talks are reportedly underway for a super fight between Terence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. Crawford, 34, who is the current WBO welterweight champion, was previously managed by Daniel Kinahan. Crawford's proposed fight with Spence could be one of the most significant welterweight bouts in boxing since Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao in 2015. However, Espinosa said it could be a major obstacle if Kinahan is still advising Crawford, as the fight would take place on US soil and involve US athletes and companies. Obviously, there's a lot of concern in the highest levels of government about Daniel Kinahan and where his business is, he told Fight Hype. At a press conference held in Dublin, at a press conference held in Dublin by the Gardaí, Right, the US Department of State, Europol and the U UK National Crime Agency announced a whopping $5 million reward for key information leading to the Kenahan gang being dismantled. The three leaders of the gang are named by authorities as Daniel Kenahan, who runs day-to-day -day operations, his father, Christy Kenahan Sr., who organises property purchases, and Christy Kenahan Jr., who oversees their finances. Following the news, members of the boxing world, including Bob Arum, distanced themselves from Daniel. Tyson Fury, who was previously advised by the Dublin-born mob boss, also stated that he was not involved with him when asked if they had any business together. Zero, absolutely zero, he exclaimed. That's none of your business and none of anyone else's business, I don't think, is it, Fury said. My business is my business, your business is your business, Fury continued. MTK Global, the boxing promotions company founded by Daniel Kinahan in 2012, also ceased operations citing unprecedented levels of unfair scrutiny and criticism. It came just one day after Bob Yellen stepped down as CEO for personal reasons. So there's your first one. Okay, about uh, about Daniel Kinahan, right? And and now now Stephen Espinosa is trying to distance himself, not me, Gov. And they're all run, you know, all up, up loads of them are running from the ship like rats are leaving a sinking ship. The thing is, right, is that they've the problem is they've left their fingerprints, footprints, electronic prints, right, all over the ship, right? And the forensic investigators have got it all now. They've got it all. So anyway, right, the next one is a bit more sinister. Okay, right, I'm going to pause it for a minute because my dinner's on, right? I just want to, I don't want to burn it, do I? Hang on a sec. Right, I'm going to put it on pause. Right, oh, I'm back. I've got the beef brisket in the, in the um, oven and I've got the spinach, green beans and roasted taters. All right, so it's cooking now. Now, let's go back to the article, right, this one. Threats. Sinister call-out video shared as feud reignites between Kerry and Limerick gangs. Gardy diffused scenes on streets of North Kerry as feud ignites following stabbing of young Charlie man. Gardy moved scores of young males from a number of public areas in Listow and Ballybunion on Monday as a bitter feud between gangs erupted after a man was stabbed on Saturday. Whew, let me get the breath back. Whew. The young Charlie man was attacked in Ballybunion late on Saturday night in a fracas which in a fracas which has received a number of non life threatening stab injuries. He refused to go to hospital for treatment. It is feared the assault has now reignited a dangerous feud between Kerry and Limerick gangs as a number of so-called so call-out videos were posted to social media in the hours since. Gardy were caught to Ballybunion on Monday to disperse a large group of young men who had travelled there from Listall and Tralee intent on locking horns with the group from Limerick, who had, who had by then left the resort. A similar situation in Listow had was also diffused by Gardy on Monday. In one of the videos filmed in Ballybunion, an unseen man threatens to chop his assailants to bits. There won't be an name of arrival 
Limerick gang to come to Ballyban Yun for the summer. The first one we catch will chop him to bits. After another sinister video filmed in Trali showed a masked man again threatening the Limerick gang with up to 20 males, all masked, behind him, no more peace boys, he vows. In this video, apparently filmed in Limerick, another gang, through their spokesman, vows, I'll get my hands on your woolly fucking w whip woman and I'll bat your head off ye fucking Egypt. Well, I don't know what that means. Right, but obviously he does. Anyway, so, you know what I mean? Well, can't you just calm it down, all of you? Back to your corners. If for no other reason, then it's going to disrupt business. Never good for business, all these feuds and all this carry on. Plus, innocent bystanders and members of the public. You know, you're not going to earn any money when you're fighting, are you? Right, and whatever you do, right, you know what I mean? You know, that's not, it's not for me to judge, right? Well, it's not putting any money in your pocket, right? It's not keeping your family safe, is it? So my suggestion is back to your corners. Back to business and doing whatever you want. You know, put down the weapons and all this carry on. It's no good for anyone. So that's the second one. And then the third one, right? Well, we have a little laugh for this one, right? You're going to like this. Devil wears Prada. Rotella clan, Paraguayan cartel leader dresses up as a woman to escape jail. Caesar Ortiz donned a wig, fake lashes, makeup, and even freshly painted nails before dressing in a skirt um, and top to make his escape. The leader of the Rotella drug clan cartel made a bid to escape jail by dressing as a woman. I can't help laughing. Caesar Ortiz, who was serving an eight-year sentence for armed robbery, made the bid to escape to Kumbu National Penitentiary in Paraguay on May the 29th. It was reported that the 36-year-old was visited by a woman who accompanied him to a private room. I suppose they had, you know, them, um, them special visits, but they have a bit of rumpy-pumpy, I suppose. That's what it is, isn't it? They do it in Holland, I think, don't they? Anyway, right, one of them sexy visits where the man and the husband or whatever, they can have a bit of rumpy-pumpy or something like that. Well, I suppose, you know, unloads a scrumpy bag, doesn't it? Better than a tissue when you're in jail. Anyway, right, um, it was reported that the 36-year-old was visited by a woman who accompanied him to a private room. The drug baron then donned a wig, fake lashes, makeup, and even freshly painted nails before dressing in a skirt and top to make his escape. In disguise, <laughs> in disguise, Ortiz made his way through several checkpoints in the prison before a guard opened the final gate and let him exit. He got out. Just as the escapee thought his cunning plot had worked, he was spotted by police a few streets away from the prison and was arrested by three others who... He was arrested by three others who were allegedly part of the plot. He was then taken to Emboscada National Penitentiary. Ortiz's wife contacted authorities and begged they send her husband back to the National Penitentiary because among sorry, amid concerns that prison guards could not guarantee his well being at the Emboscada prison. Well no, yeah, especially if he's dressed in um a skirt, top, right, makeup, eyelashes, a wig, and freshly painted nails. Yeah, but he, I mean, I don't think anyone could guarantee his security. Right? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear, he'll have to change his name, right, to bend over. <laughs> right, here we go. The mob, bo the, the mob boss had been in prison at Tacumbo National Penitentiary since 2019. In February 2021, he led a riot at the prison after authorities discovered an underground tunnel that was under construction for a planned escape. At least seven inmates were decapitated for allegedly revealing the plan. Oh, oh. Seven inmates were decapitated for allegedly revealing the plan. They don't fuck about in Paraguay. Ortiz was charged with murder hostage taking, organising a prison riot and being associated with a criminal organisation. 
Authorities have further ordered an investigation into at least 20 prison guards in connection to the escape. At least four have already been taken into custody, including a police officer who returned to the force after serving a six-year sentence for drug trafficking. No! Right, um, there's a police officer, he gets six years in jail for drug trafficking, and then he returns to being a police officer. Well, he's a mad world in Paraguay. Another accomplice was identified as his brother-in-law. Well, how about that then, right? Well, that takes the biscuit. That's got to be the story of the week, isn't it? It's got to be the story of the week. Right, Caesar Ortiz, right? He's trying to dress up, right, like Kim Kardashian, right? <laughs> Gets captured and they take him to another jail. When you can imagine all the inmates banging on the door with, when they're looking at him with the eyelashes and the painted nails. And his wife's ringing up. Get him back here. Get him back here. Oh, dear. So anyway, that moves on, right, to the um, Sandra Vaughan and Daniel Kinahan love affair. And the fact that, you know, um, Sandra, she dons the great big strap on, right, and pegging with Daniel Kinahan. And I, I used to wonder, you know, why do they like that? You know, like that Ralph, isn't it, in the C Sopranos. Ralphie, when he was with Janice, um, Tony Soprano's sister, and she explained, right, that he wants her to stick a big dildo up his arse and say he's a little bitch or something, right? Well, maybe that's what Daniel gets off on. Well, obviously, right, so I'd just like to warn authorities, okay, that, that when you do finally get Daniel Kinahan in custody, okay, right, I want you to be on the lookout, right, in case he dons a wig, fake lashes, makeup, and freshly painted nails, okay, and he's wearing a skirt and a top. Okay, you've got to be careful, see, so that could have been one of these things, right, and he may start going by the name of Danielle Kinahan, <laughs> right, sorry, I just can't stop laughing, do you know what I mean, but it all gels in, what is it with these cartel bosses then, they, you know, we got him, Cesar Ortez, dressing up as a woman, we got Daniel Kinahan, right, getting pegged like Ralphie out the Sopranos by Sandra Vaughan, Right, we've got Danny Vaughan, right, he hides in the wardrobe and he looks out through the keyhole. Yeah, they're weird, ain't they? Anyway, right, so this is going to be Art Hostage. Can't even remember what episode this is going to be now. Um, this is going to be Art Hostage, right, episode 147. Okay, we got Steve Espinosa, right, he's um, trying to distance himself from Daniel Kinahan. Right, we've got Limerick and Kerry Gangs kicking off. Well, can you turn it in? No one's going to earn any money when there's war. Right, and then the last one, right, we've got Mr. Ortiz, right, the Paraguayan drug cartel boss trying to dress as a woman to escape jail. And we finally finished off, right, with the Sandra Vaughan-Daniel Kinahan pegging session. Art hostage over and out.